Welcome storytellers. Although our stories of transformation are fully experienced by us, I believe they aren't made for us. And I am so glad that you are here as I have a big announcement about this page and about the new chapter starting tonight. I love how God works and that it gets to be today that we launch this new part of Love Sarah Kate. Because 10 years ago, I stood on a stage with my husband and we were baptized together. And it was the first time I got to share my story. The story up till that time was that I had received a word, one word that changed my entire life. And the word was wanted. Have you ever received that one word? Maybe it's during your day. Maybe it's not even a word. Maybe it's a smile or a door opening or the unexpected pay it forward at McDonald's or Starbucks. Have you ever received that one word, that one moment that tends to open up more doors or encourage your heart to do that next step? And for me, it was a step into eternity was the word wanted. And not just that word, but the whole weekend, how God weaved stories from sitting down on the pavement and getting to draw a chalk house with an amazing uh, children's volunteer who drew her chalk house and was talking about a lesson she was teaching to the Kidmen and she shared about the light in the house and how that light was God. And as I drew my house and as she described this light, God began to show me that my light, that I had felt like I was shining so bright, smiling so big, doing all the things, checking all the marks, memorizing all the verses, showing up every single Sunday that light that I thought I was illuminating was actually light from other sources. And it wasn't coming from in me. It was being bounced off. And as God began to speak to me in that moment, I began to argue. <laughs> and going over my whole story with him leading up to that one word wanted and leading up to that one moment of stepping into eternity with him and stepping into an abundant life I was made for and it didn't all culminate in that one moment I want you to know that it began in that moment it began with really getting real with myself and not hiding or running away from the truth anymore. The truth that I was broken and making bad choices for my family and scared and doubting and shameful and guilt, full of it all. But I kept it inside and I put on a front and I lived out the front and I didn't know how to say I need help and I'm drowning and I feel like I'm in a crowd of people screaming and no one can hear me. But that night I got with a bunch of an amazing women 
who went first and shared their mess and their pits and where God stepped into those ditches with them. It was the first time I'd seen the dirty feet of Jesus. And he was beautiful and amazing and he wanted me and all my mess. And I could see his dirty feet because he was stepping into my mess. And he wanted me. And at that moment that I laid it, laid it all out. And I remember crying, crying. And, and it was like the tears were washing and I became brand new in that one moment. But it was every moment afterward. It was the moment that I came home and I had my first fight after knowing Jesus was fully in my heart and that I was following him. I had my first fight with my mother during my son's birthday party. <laughs> and I went, okay, I know, I know you, Jesus. You were in my heart. <laughs> what is happening? And I remember the words that came out of my mouth. I am his and I am sorry. And I remember that night thinking, wow, you are working. I can, I can see you. I can, I'm starting to listen for you now and I'll keep listening. And although I've gone through many seasons, some listening better than others, over the last couple years especially, I have watched God laser focus my eyes and my ears towards this fundamental truth that our stories, although experienced by us fully, are not made to stay with us. Because as I shared my story 10 years ago, as I raised my hand and said, yes, I am a follower of Jesus and perfectly falling forward with Jesus. I watched as people raised their hands and started their moment with Jesus after I shared my story. And that was the first glimpse, the first glimmer that God gave me that day 10 years ago that our stories were made for others. And what I'm going to announce tonight is a culminating of prayers and quiet times and walks and discussions with amazing leaders in my life. And I want to give it to you all. I want to share what I've experienced with you all because it is not meant to stay with me. I've gotten to experience this and I believe you can experience this too. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, here we go. I want to help everyone I can share their stories because you see before the moment of getting baptized, I got to sit with another group of people and this amazing team walked through my story with me moment by moment, the good, the bad, the ugly, all leading up to that first step with Jesus. They walked that through with me and in that process, I got to see even more of Jesus. I got to know even more about my husband and his stories and his struggles as he walked, because we did this together in this group. And I got to see him walk it out. And I was asked questions I had never been asked before. 
and I got to think thoughts I'd never thought before and pray prayers I'd never prayed before because someone was willing to sit with me and walk through my story and just listen because what I want you to find here on Love Sarah Kate is not just a bunch of encouragements although you will find those I hope I want you to know that there's also people ready to listen and there'll be times of listening and times of sharing and we're made for both we just need to discern which one it is in that moment and that's something I've been going through as well is learning how to listen and learning how to share at just the right time with God and God will tell you and this journey of learning how to listen and share and discern I want to share with you because you're made to share your story you are so unique you are so wanted and the passion fueled purpose that God has put into your heart is made to be shared and when I say shared is anyone else getting that scary feeling that you're gonna be asked to go on stage or to a new country or new state anybody get a little petrified when I say the word share let me know it's okay because I used to think that too and that's another reason I didn't I held back going oh no <laughs> I am not made for that um, I can be an actress and I can go on and I can play a part but don't ask me to go up as myself and share all the crud that's going on you know but some of you might be some of you maybe need to share in a stage of some sort but I believe that most of us get to share our stories in small groups in one-to-one -one moments that's the daily transformation that's the daily seeds being planted in our own hearts and in the hearts of others and I've seen the power in the ordinary and the power of saying yes today Jesus will you come and meet me here and what you're doing in my heart will you interpret that for me will you put that into words that I understand and if there is a person that is supposed to hear that will you bring them to me and although I don't pray that prayer daily I wish I could say I did but I have seen moments where a UPS guy comes in and he's sweating and it just takes me noticing and saying you do you want some water are, are you tired would you like to sit down and the look on their faces of the people that I've gotten to love on especially over the last six years from uh, delivery trucks to plumbers to insurance salesmen to landscapers walking through the door and just getting to ask the question what do you need is it water is it sea is it just to let you know hey I, I know how hard you're working and I see you that's sharing a part of myself too because haven't you been there I'm a mom I'm a mom of two I've got a teenager now and 
a soon-to-be fifth grader, big 10 and 13 year old. And I know as a mom, I've had that feeling of being unseen and all it takes is someone messaging or a, hey, wow, I saw what you did there and good job, you're doing good, keep going mama, you know, to just go, the power of being seen and known that is woven all through the word of God and that's a part of our stories you see sharing our stories doesn't have to be this huge narrative every time we share it but if we do know our narrative if we know that moment we came to know Jesus and your moment does not look like my moment or my husband's moment or my daughter's moment but it matters. It was your moment. And someone in your life needs to hear your story. And if you're struggling in it, tell them that too. Please share that. So many times I also didn't share my story because it didn't have a bow on it. It wasn't done. And I've learned that it's never going to be done. <laughs> Good news, y'all. It's not going to be done. Not here. So you got to share the in-between. And in sharing my story and, and listening to so many countless others' stories or reading them, I found three things. And sharing a story. One, it takes a lot of work. It takes that really hard acknowledgement of I am going through this. I am not okay. Or it's saying, wow, you know, maybe you're in a joyful moment and it's God's in the right in the middle of the hat. And I need to acknowledge him in all this good that is happening. It takes work because it's daily choices. It's daily choices to walk away in an argument or to say, yes, I will stay up just a little bit longer to hug your stuffy or Stay in your room just a little bit longer because you're scared or it's a daily choice to open a door for someone to say, no, I didn't do that. It, it was someone else. I don't want to take credit for it. It's a daily choice and that takes a lot of work to be intentional. So that's one part of sharing our stories is the intent of the daily walk, the daily discipline and getting with Jesus, not just in those quiet 20 minute moments or an hour for you, if that's how long your quiet time is, but in the daily, in the grind, in the middle of a sucky work day, getting with Jesus in the moment with him, that daily work. Number two is that humility part. It is so crucial. It is such a barrier. I mean, that was a huge barrier for me and for so many of us. Like, it's, it's, it's a struggle to not say, nope, don't, don't need to. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to be with you today. Just gonna keep pushing on. Despite being tired, I'm going to keep going. But to humbly say, no, I'm tired and I don't, and I just need you. So sharing our stories, we get to embrace humility. And in sharing our stories, we get to learn to listen. Listen to God first, listening to others and getting 
to learn from each other. So those are three things uh, that sharing our stories can do. Are you ready to share your story? Are you ready? Are you, are you feeling it? <laughs> Admit if you're not. <laughs> the big announcement is that we are creating a group. It's a private group. It's a story group. And just like me, I want to create a spot for you to get asked questions you may have never been asked before, to walk through your story and not just the moment story, not just the moment where you knew Jesus, but every moment since then. The story that's happening now, the story that God is writing right now. We all need practice. Our spiritual walks is a spiritual muscle that we must practice, right? Or things get limp. And in order to build that muscle of sharing our stories, we need a safe spot to do that. And maybe you're blessed and you have a great community, and I hope you do, that incorporates stories into everyday life and has a team ready for you to share. But I want to create a spot, a private group where you answer some questions before you come in, those first initial questions that you may have never been asked before. You answer those and I'll get to accept you into the group and it'll be a safe spot, I pray, that you can practice sharing your story with people saying, yes, I am here not only to learn how to share my story, but how to listen to others too. And just listen and encourage. And say, yes, you're not alone in this. And yes, you can do it. You can share that hard story with your mom, your dad, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your coworkers, whoever you come in contact with. Whoever God's putting on your heart. Has someone been put on your heart? Let me know. Is someone right now on your heart to share your story with, but you've been scared to death? Going, no, they won't get it. Are you saying a no for them? And yes, they may completely brush you off. They may ignore it. They may change the subject immediately. But don't stop loving. Don't stop praying for them and don't stop looking for an opportunity to share your story. What if you had a chance to come in and practice actually having that conversation, maybe a conversation you've been wanting to have so badly but don't know where to start? Start here. Start in this group. And I'm praying for every one of you here today that if you feel led to join this group, maybe you're a person that is ready to share your story. You are just, yes, I have been on those same pages. Count me in. Yes, I will go first. I will share. Or maybe you're a person that is saying, I have no clue. <laughs> no one's ever really talked about this with me. I want to know what you're talking about with these steps of sharing your story. What does that look like for me? If that's you, join. Or maybe you're in the third category and you don't know Jesus. Or maybe you've heard of him and it's been a lot of different, he's been in a lot of different things and said a lot of different ways and you just want to know more about Jesus who I know and love and get to follow who says he wants me. You come too. Your story matters. 
You do not have to know Jesus to join this group. You have a story being written out. And your pursuit and your love and the moments you are having in your life still matter. You are so loved and so wanted for this group too. No matter which person you are, A, B, or C, you are wanted in this group. And I'm praying for you, each one of you. And I'll go first, okay? I'll go first. Here's where I'm at these days. I am in the middle of learning how to love my kids in their struggle. And as a mom, it is the toughest journey I've ever gone on in my entire 35 years of living. And I have gone some pretty hard roads. But this one feels like the hardest. My kids were diagnosed with ADHD. And some of you may know about it. Some of you may be living the struggle too. But it, on the surface, it looks like distraction, right? Just, but there's, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what ADHD actually is. And I, I could go into that, but feel free to message if you'd like me to. But the struggle of learning how my kids need to be loved in moment to moment and dealing with their emotions and dealing with social anxiety or dealing with choice paralysis or dealing with each other and other people and learning how their minds truly work and golly I have gotten to know God in a brand new way in this season because I've gone to ask God about their brains and their makeup and even about the degree that he allowed me to have which is psychology and getting to use this degree uh, those studies and to now research deeper into methods and ADHD and groups and getting with other moms and dads and people walking the same walk as my kids who may have gone further it's changing everything because it is literally moment by moment sometimes and what they need and getting to ask God in that moment what does my son need what does my daughter need it is those prayers that are changing everything see I see God far clearer now uh, even in the last 10 years in the last few months of getting to f see my kids and see God working moment by moment with them and understanding that God truly does give just enough grace and enough love and enough forgiveness and then he is enough in the moment by moment for everything you need. An example of this is on Sunday. <laughs> My son had an amazing event to go to and he really wanted to go to it, but he didn't want to be with everyone during the first part of church. and. Although there have been times I have pushed him to go out of his comfort zone and go and try new things and be with his friends or make new friends. At that moment, I felt a nudge and it was just the nudge that Harris needed to just come with me and just sit with me and sitting with him was full on worship. 
and getting to hear his heart and what he was interested in. God worked in his conversations about video games and weaving Psalm 139 into that conversation. Only God could do that. <laughs> and he got to go to this really fun event afterward because he was calm and his thoughts were together and he was more himself because he had had that time to just sit. That was victory. That's what victory looked like that day. You see, sharing our stories is sharing those little moments with each other. And I've gotten to share this with some people in my life. And it, I found out that I'm not alone in it, through it. And the words not alone, you know, are said a lot here on social media, but to actually experience not alone, to hear someone who's gone the path or is walking it the same path at the same time and going, oh. it just feels like someone's lifting your shoulders and carrying you just a little bit. And I like to take your shoulder, my friend. I would like to lift your arms because I know some of you are tired, tired of holding this in. And this isn't just about the struggles. This is about the joyful too. And we're going to be in this together. And I've got some amazing resources that I prayed over that have been a culmination of the last 10 years of walking with Jesus and being with amazing teams and amazing leaders and different churches I have been in and been a part of has led to these resources that I would love to share with you. And they're all ready. They're just waiting for you. <laughs> and I cannot wait to share them with you. That's what we're starting tonight. Who is with me? Sunflowers have been an image that God is giving me uh, throughout this new season. So drop a sunflower if you're ready to stand out and stand up and learn to share your story or have a safe spot to learn and share and practice drop a sunflower and I'll message you this doesn't have to be on this live right now I will message you and we'll start the conversation and we'll get you add to this group and I look forward to what's going to come out of this group Welcome to Love Sarah Kate, <laughs> a spot where I hope and pray that you feel empowered and love to share your story. And if you're new here, let me just end by saying this. The reason we call this page Love Sarah Kate is because I wanted this to be a letter, a letter of encouragement every day from someone you get to know. So I hope you get to know me as I get to know you. And that's why I end all my letters and all my posts with Love Sarah Kate, because it's my personal note, personal word, personal encouragement personal, sometimes looking like a journal page, to share with you. So, love your story. Keep sharing your story. And I look forward to seeing you in this brand new group, in this brand new chapter of Love Sarah Kate. Welcome. <laughs>